Bad news on the Zion Williamson injury front. He's feeling sore. The team's holding him back a little bit. Is this a big deal? Not a big deal. Plus, let's talk G League. The Birmingham Squadron have their first ever home game coming up on Sunday. It's the Friday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans at NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Friday we got a Zion Williamson injury update for y'all. We're going to talk some G League with Alex Squadron, who's out there writing a book covering the Birmingham Squadron as well. That'll be in segments two and three. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. We're free and available five days a week for you all. No paywall or anything like that, breaking down everything you want to know about the team. And right now, it's about to be the Zion Williamson injury. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is also brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop Stop paying for subscriptions you don't want, need, or can even help you negotiate better deals on those you want to keep. All right, so let's jump in to the uh, Zion Williamson injury news. This is, of course, going to be the biggest thing around the team for a little bit. He was set to play five on five, his first real practice with the team yesterday, but he's experiencing soreness in his foot that he broke, so the team is dialing him back just a little bit. They are trying to kind of spin this, and maybe it's true, that it's not really a big deal. You know, and I think from one sense, it probably isn't. This is a guy who hasn't been able to kind of go through a full on workout, you know, uh, for a for a long time now. And so he starts to playing four on four the past couple of days, really working himself up to getting through a full on practice to be able to play, you know, in, in actual NBA games. And he's probably feeling sore, just like if you didn't work out for a while. Right. You're going to feel sore. It's going to hurt a little bit. You're not going to feel great when you're starting to get back into the swing of things. And because there's so much at stake here with Zion, it could just simply be like, whoa, hold on. Let's dial it back a little bit. Let's let him recover from this. We don't want to put any unneeded stress or anything like that on his body. This could honestly just be like one of those things. It's standard, right? You worked out extra hard. You're a little bit more sore right now. You yourself can push through that. But for a guy who, you know, kind of has the hopes and dreams of a franchise on his shoulders, maybe it's best not to do that to risk anything at all, right? If you pull a muscle working out hard the next day, who who really cares? It's not a big deal. Something happens to Zion, it is a little bit of a big deal. It's a huge deal, even if it's a minuscule chance of it happening. There's just very little room for risk tolerance in something like this. But it also could be kind of bigger things, right? There could be more at play here. It could be... The extra weight that he's carrying, if he is carrying any, is adding to the slowness of the recovery. And if he doesn't need to carry that extra weight on his body, would he not feel as sore and would it be easier for him to kind of get back into the swing of things and make this go a whole lot smoother? Or are they lying to us? And is there something more at play here? Is there a bigger thing at play? Because they've kind of tried to downplay everything so far and everything keeps getting pushed back out into the future. And now this has a lot of just speculation, right? A lot of people thinking that he's just shutting it down for the year and he's not going to play at all. Or he doesn't care and he doesn't want to do it. Or we won't see him until 2022. Again, we don't know. Like, we don't know. I wish I had answers for you for all of this. I certainly think he should play this year, even if it's just for 10 to 15 games. And until we're in March, I'm not going to say they should shut him down for the season. We want those young guys, Kyra Lewis, Trey Murphy, to play over guys like Garrett Temple and Tomas Sadoransky. And oh, in this game tonight and over the weekend, I better not see either of those two guys get significant minutes. So if we want to see those young guys go out and play and develop, we want to see Zion out there play and develop even more than he's already done and live up to all of his potential. So I don't see really any point in shutting him down this year. If this holds him back an extra week or two, maybe that's what it's going to be. That's great. You know, I don't think this is one of those things that some soreness adds for weeks to it. I think it just kind of screws up the timeline in the sense of, 
you know, you've got to get him to go through a bunch of practices, get in some game shape before you throw him out there on an NBA court. And as the season goes on, it's tougher to do that. You practice less. You don't have time to go through all of that. It's a lot easier to do in the off season when you're practicing every single day. He can develop that chemistry. He can get into the flow of everything. You don't really have the ability to do that nearly as easily in the season. So every delay gets kind of compounded by that fact. One practice kind of matters in something like this. So all of that kind of delays things a little bit more for New Orleans. But certainly you can kind of see this coming. I heard some rumors about this from people with the team the past couple of days that it was a bit of a setback. You know, is it the biggest thing? Not necessarily. But again, I'm not getting a full on answer on that from people right now either. So... Well, we got to unfortunately wait and see. But when you saw the Pelicans game against the Milwaukee Bucks get taken off of the ESPN schedule, probably wasn't a promising sign that that was going to be the case. But hey, cool. We don't have a nine o'clock tip off now. We have a 7 p.m. tip off. So, you know, there's not much to say. Like, I wish I had more for you all with this. It's just it's it's disappointing, right? If you're frustrated, you have every right to feel frustrated. If you want to tune this team out till he comes back, I totally get it. I hope you don't. I hope you listen to Locked On Pelicans every single day, free and available five days a week for you. I'll make it your first listen, of course. So it's just, it's one of those things. It sucks. It's disappointing. I totally get it. It just kind of, it is, it is what it is. And it's just that kind of year, right? Like there's, there's not much else to say. We don't have nearly a complete picture to try and judge accurately what, what's going on. We can make assumptions, Zion's Silence and not speaking to the media and not having spoken to the media since since media day certainly isn't doing himself any favors. He probably, as I've said, needs to grow up a whole lot more, but it just sucks. But I don't to kind of cut off that line of questioning now and, you know, we can revisit this in the future. Don't really see uh, a, a, a scenario where personally I would shut him down for the year. If you get 10 games out of him, cool. You get 10 games out of him, even if it's something as small as that. But hopefully, hopefully would be more. But yeah, you know, I think there is now some doubt that you see him play in 2021. And now you could be looking at January, which is, you know, a month from now. So I I don't have more, unfortunately. Again, like I said, I wish I did. So coming up, let's talk G League. It is the Birmingham Squadron's first home game. And I've got Alex Squadron, no relation to the team, who is covering them. I'm going to come on and talk about all things Birmingham G League and how it relates to the Pelicans. But before we get to that, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Truebill. You know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam that's out to get you. So don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions today. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. And on average, people save up to $720. $20 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly easy. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions with one tap. There's no worse feeling, no worse feeling than getting scammed. You lose money, you feel like an idiot in the process, or you know what? That money adds up. Again, $720 per year is no joke. So don't get got by corporations. Use Truebill today to save yourself some money. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Again, go right now. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. All right, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. We're free and available five days a week, breaking down everything about this team, good or bad, Zion injury news or when they win or lose. But there's also a G League team for the Pelicans now, the Birmingham Squadron. And I've got to welcome Alex Squadron onto Locked On Pelicans here. Also, by the way, man, perfect last name for covering the team. (laughs) I have to say, like, I think it's a running joke with the team. I have no affiliation I mean, obviously, I've been covering them, but I have not. I don't own the team. It's just a random <laughs> coincidence. I like to say that it's destiny, but I, I it's like it's just completely random. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> pretty, it's pretty great. So. He, Alex is formerly with Slam Magazine. He's a freelance writer. He's working on a new book right now about kind of starting up a G League team. So he's been covering the team. He's going to be there the whole year, really getting behind the scenes access to everything. And as you and I were talking about before we started recording here, you know, th- there's not really that sort of level of access that people can kind of really get very easily when it comes to the G League. So I think you bring a lot of insight that people won't get for something that but, you know, the Pelicans want to make this, I think, you know, kind of a core part of their franchise as a whole. So just my first question to you with all of this is, 
how's it been for the team just trying to kind of get off the ground and get operations running in a new city like that? Totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more that the whole thought process behind the book was, you know, obviously these are guys who some of them former NBA players. Um, this is a step away from the NBA. All of them were college stars or, you know, done great things overseas. And it's just like undercover. I, I just like, it's, it's crazy to me how little people know about the G league. And, um, like you said, how little attention is kind of paid to it. Um, so that was like initially why I came down here that that's the, the idea behind the book is what's this experience like for the players. Um, and then the other side of it, uh, like you mentioned is this is a new team. I mean, this is like a, a completely new thing for Alabama. Uh, this is the, I think it's the first pro team, pro basketball team in Alabama in 15 years. Uh, Birmingham doesn't have any, you know, major league sports franchises. So uh, that's new as well. And yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, I think that it's a challenge because one, anytime you bring something new to a city, like, you know, everyone's like, what's go like, just no one knows about it. Uh, so there's that. And then there's the, it's an added challenge that people don't generally know about the G league. Um, so I think even when people find out like, oh, the squadron are here, uh, they're like, well, what, you know, what is the G? They don't understand the level of talent, the caliber of players here. Um, so I think that they're, you know, they're slowly starting to build uh, a following, you know, that you've seen kind of the social media account grow steadily. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've lived here for now over a month. I moved from New York for the project and you hear people just talking about it more, um, you know, getting excited. They, they were on the road. They've been on the road for the first month. Uh, yeah, their, their home opener is coming up on Sunday now. So this will be exactly. really the first chance for people in the city to kind of like experience what this is like. Right. And that was because the arena, uh, which is legacy arena downtown is, was under renovation. And, you know, I've, I've been to a bunch of G league, uh, facilities now that that's like one of the nicer ones in the G league. So that they're really trying to create like a real experience. Um, I mean, from the outside, it looks like almost like an NBA arena. I mean, it's, it's big and it's right in the middle of the city. Um, so I think that all signs and, and, you know, from what I've seen and heard, like, it seems like it's gonna, at least at home opener is going to be pretty hype. Um, but I think the challenge is from there, you know, can they kind of roll off the momentum and, and keep fans coming? And a lot of that, you know, I think will depend on how the team does. Um, and, and obviously the, the movement back and forth with players from the Pelicans. So, um, but yeah, I, I will say that everybody is super excited. Like e even the players, like I I've spoken to a bunch of players about just being a part of a new franchise. Like that is just a cool thing uh, to kind of be able to set the tone for what uh, what the squadron are and what they will be. So uh, there's definitely a lot of excitement. It's, so it's like a mark of pride almost kind of being like the first players on the team. And I guess, you know, no. you, you'll have people that are like literally some of the first fans of of the squadron here going to games and starting to follow them. You know, is it? It, it seems like, we, you know, obviously wins and losses are a really big thing when it comes to kind of building the following of a team. But it also seems like they really went out of their way to kind of get local guys, you know, Auburn players, Alabama players to really kind of fill this roster out to add some more local flavor to it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they uh, coach Ryan Pannone, he's spoken about this. You know, it, it was it kind of happened by accident. Uh, I mean, it, you know, obviously, they know that those guys football here and, and is huge and Auburn and Alabama are at the center of that. Uh, and they have an Auburn guy in Jared Harper and an Alabama guy in John Petty Jr. Um, you know, coach said, and, and it's, it's true. Those are two guys who are like more than deserving of being on the team. They're both very much in the rotation and, you know, Jared Harper has been a star in the G league for years now. And John Petty was, uh, you know, one of the better shooters in college basketball last year. So, uh, it, they made sense for the team just to be on the team, but certainly like, like media day and things like that. People are very interested in hearing about <laughs> Jared and John. Um, and yeah, anytime you can get an Auburn and Alabama guy on the team, like, I mean, John has said, like people are reaching out to him daily for just tickets and just to express their excitement about him being here. Same with Jared. I think that they had at some point like a competition who could bring more fans. Uh, <laughs> So there definitely is like that element of like that helps build a fan base. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, it wasn't intentional. Like, let's get them to try to get the fans. It was more like we got them and this is something that we could build off of for sure. 
No, uh, that's interesting. So there, so it's not simply just we want to pack the the arena. It sounds like there's, and David Griffin has talked about this, and people I've talked to in the Pelicans organization have talked about this. They really try and want to ingrain this team kind of within the larger franchise, right? It sounds like Ryan Pannoni has spent a lot of time here in, in New Orleans working with, you know, the parent club. What's that interaction been like between, say, G League and the Pelicans and then the coaching staff and the Pelicans as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that uh, having that one-to-one affiliation, you know, that's, that's the point. Um, and I think a lot of, and I will say that it feels – you know, the team is so focused on what's happening day to day that it feels separate. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you don't get constant talk every day about, you know, what, what's going on with the Pelicans because it's, you know, we need to focus on winning and, and playing well here. Uh, but certainly like implementing a lot of the same like uh, systems on offense and defense, a lot of the same philosophies, um, just like things like that, like teaching the same things. Oh, you might hear him say, you know, this is something they do in New Orleans. So you, you got to be prepared, you know, things like that. Uh, so it's certainly like you prepare these guys in the case that they get called up, uh, that they can be, you know, transitioned smoothly. But the other element of that is that um, most of these guys, the guys who are not on two-way contracts, can get called up by any team. So mm-hmm. it's also about, you know, winning games in the G League and focusing on their overall player development so that no matter where they go, you know, these coaches are, are really dedicated to just um, – improving the games of these players so that wherever their next step is, regardless if it's the Pelicans, uh, they can thrive in it. No, and I'm sure that's kind of, you know, if you try and build a culture, right, around an organization, helping your guys be the best players possible, not just for the Pels, but, you know, to make have a shot in the NBA, right? I think that's probably one of the best ways you can go about doing something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, all these things do come together, you know, it's in terms of player development and, you know, if the players improve, obviously the team plays better. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of, you know, focusing on obviously that individual, what is the G league about? G league is about these guys getting better. Uh, but also when they get better, um, you know, overall as a team, they're going to win more games. So, um, it, you know, it all, all kind of comes together that way. Yeah, so they haven't been winning a ton. We'll talk about that coming up. Well, they won their first two. Now it's out now in four cents. We'll talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. And so for the holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar in certain cases. Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich, decadent flavor covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calorie, sugar, net carbs and fat and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds delicious and healthy there are so many flavors you're going to have a hard time choosing you're going to have the raspberry the mint brownie cherry or double chocolate cookies and cream or peanut butter brownie and built bar gives you that extra fuel you need to burst down those mall doors and battle all the other holiday shoppers or if you're just standing in an endless shopping line built bar can give you that extra something to keep you going so throw one in your jacket or your purse you never know when you're going to need it and because it's the holiday season you've got to spread these around during the holiday time and if you're friends with Santa, we'll tell Santa to throw a few Built Bars into those stockings with so many flavors, they'd make anyone's Christmas morning a happy one. And if you like those marshmallowy treats you get around the holiday time too, you've got Built Bar Puffs. They're light, they're fluffy, they're marshmallowy through and through. Different flavors all covered in chocolate and they taste so good you won't believe that they're filled with protein and good for you. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that is promo code LOCK15 for 15% off over at Built.com. Um, all right. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. We're free and available five days a week for you all, breaking down everything you want to know about this team, whether it's Zion injuries, play on the court, or even the G League team in Birmingham, the squadron. And today we're talking with Alex Squadron, who's covering the G League squadron in Birmingham, writing a book about it. So we just went over kind of some of the general stuff when it comes to the team, but let's get into the actual on court. Uh, aspect of things you know this is a team's two and four they started off winning their first two games had more wins than the pelicans actually did for a little bit before losing the last four and now they get the home opener the first game in the legacy arena 
you know, for, for fans of the Pels who want to be a little bit more clued into what's going on with the G League squad, what are some of the who are some of the players they should be kind of keeping an eye out for if they want to pay attention to this game on Sunday? Yeah, uh, for sure. So they won, like you said, they won their uh, first two games on the road. I mean, not easy to start your season completely on the road. Uh, so won their first two games and then played two of the better teams uh, and have lost four in a row. But I know that they've been like itching to come back. Uh, and so hopefully that'll that'll turn around with their, you know, their home opener on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a ton of talent on the team. Um, you know, I, I heard you on another podcast recently talking about uh, – the Pelicans' lack of of shooters and, and um, you know and, and things like that. They've got a bunch. <laughs> They've got a bunch. The lack of a lot of things. <laughs> you know, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to be nice, um, but yeah, I mean they, they've got uh, the backcourt is Jared Harper and Joe Young. Uh, Jared, who spent um, you know it's his third year in the G League. He's a twenty and ten guy since he started in the G League, and obviously was a star at Auburn. Uh, he's averaging over 20 again um, through the first six games. Joe Young, who's like he played in the NBA, he's got um, just as much NBA experience as uh, as anybody in the G League. And so he uh, went to China for three years and was like a dominant scorer in China. I mean, he had 74 in a game. Uh, I think over a stretch of five, he was averaging like almost like 57 points a game. Uh, and it's pretty absurd. <laughs> insane. Uh, and he, he struggled a little bit with his shot, but he's like, there's zero doubt about his scoring ability. He's been able to score everywhere. Um, and then, yeah, down the roster, I mean, Malcolm Hill has been, um, in terms of just like on both sides of the ball, um, pretty dominant. I mean, he had a 32 point game. He had eight threes. He shot, uh, I think 41% from three on seven attempts per game. And he's like a lockdown defender. Um, I think they com- you know, the comparison is kind of like a PJ Tucker type where he, uh, he can kind of spread the floor and then he, he really locks down uh, on defense. And then Zylan Cheatham, who Pelicans fans are, are familiar with because yep. he spent time with the team. Um, and he's, you know, he's always just been high energy. Um, and then yet we mentioned John Petty, uh, James Banks. He's a big man who um, he went to training camp with the Pelicans as well. So he was an affiliate player uh, and he, you know, he's massive, 6'10", strong guy. Uh, he was uh, all all defense uh, in the ACC, so he blocks a lot of shots. I mean, there's just tons of guys with, with a lot of experience. Like, um, you know, John and uh, John just came out of college, but there's guys who have, like Rashad James, who have spent years overseas uh, and years in the G League. Um, Trey Holder, Riley LeChance, these guys came from, from programs overseas, so they have a lot of experience. Um, and yeah, I think that the, the talent is pretty undeniable that they've had some tough games where shots weren't falling. And, but I think, um, when it all comes together for them, I mean, they, they clearly have a lot of pieces. Now, now Ryan Pannoni's thought of as a, some, you know, fairly innovative coach, right? And when they hired him, I was, it's kind of like a name that jumps out at you as someone who's coached around a lot. What's the type of style that he has this team kind of playing on both offense and defense? <laughs> Uh, it's funny you say that because I was listening, I think it was your episode, uh, it was recently, but you were talking about the lack, how New Orleans is shooting too many mid range shots. Um, and, uh, (laughs) you know, obviously should focus on things like corner threes and, uh, just the stuff that is, you know, NBA offense built around. And that is something that coach Maloney, like he definitely emphasizes. I mean, they're big on analytics, uh, the entire staff. So they, um, shooting corner, getting the best possible looks in terms of trying to eliminate mid-range shots um, and uh, attack the rim and shoot a lot of threes. Uh, And then kind of the opposite of that on defense, where it's try to force teams to take mid-range shots, so run them off the three-point line um, and, uh, you know, first and foremost, protecting the rim. But I I would say what has stood out to me about, definitely about the squadron, just about the G League in general, is the pace. I mean, teams, I mean, the coaching staff here emphasizes it every day, just like run Interesting. the entire game. Uh, but these games go by fast. I mean, not only is the pace, I feel like super quick. I mean, all teams seem like they like to run, but also, you know, the rules are a little different. Um, so if you get fouled, it's only one free throw. Uh, if you get fouled shooting a three, it's one for three. Um, so all of these, all of these rule changes are kind of to speed up the game, but I mean, the games have been, 
uh, right around two hours. Like there hasn't been a game longer than like two hours and 10 minutes. Um, so I think that that's one, one element of like, it's just a fun game to watch. You know, I, I, I've been covering the NBA for a while um, and had watched TV games like here and there, but now following the team and, and obviously being kind of embedded in it, you realize that these are like very entertaining uh, basketball games, the style, the pace, just the offense. Um, so that's definitely stood out to me so far too. That, that's interesting, right? Because like part of this is, you, you know, the Pelicans want to try and make some inroads, I think kind of to the like Gulf South region and rather than be like the new Orleans Pelicans be thought of more as kind of like a team of the area. So expanding into a different state that's still, you know, a little bit further away, they're not quite Gulf South, but they're still in that region, I think is a big thing, but entertainment's a big part of it. Like you don't want to go to games that are slogs and boring and unfun to watch. So, you know, bringing in a guy like Pannoni who is very much that analytical mind right threes and shots at the rim and playing quick and trying to maximize your possessions if they can play an entertaining style of basketball that's really fun high scoring that gets casual people tuning in i think to a certain degree definitely i, I think that that i mean that it's you know they play that style for the reasons that you said it, it's mm -hmm. kind of what modern basketball is but it's also clearly yeah. the style that fans like um and uh and that's a piece of it i mean that the fans are if they're coming, you know, you basically get one shot at, at impressing them and giving yeah, them kind probably. of Yeah, probably. Um, and so, you know, that goes with the encore. And then I've talked to tons of people. I mean, they have a, a minor league baseball team here, the Barons, who mm -hmm. uh, attendance-wise, they've been like one of the better uh, teams in their league for, you know, seven years straight. Uh, so there's clearly a passion for sports here. And I think that one of the ways that they've been able to do that is by building out an experience. I mean, like on Thursdays, they do Thirsty Thursdays, which is like, you know, beer for a dollar or whatever. And the kids are all Yeah, there. that's always, always a, a popular night, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. So I think building out, it, it's the encore, the style, and then, you know, they'll have tons of stuff going on at the games that, um, you know, kind of go beyond basketball just to build out that experience. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say we went to uh, Texas, the tech, we played the Texas Legends. And uh, they have like almost like a camp going while the game's going on. I mean, there's kids like um, like learning how to spin basketballs on their finger. There's like inflatable bounce houses where the kids are jumping up and down. So it's like a full experience for like almost like like a daycare center while, while the game is is going on. So there's stuff like that in the G League, which which always makes it fun and interesting. Um, but that's like kind of what a minor league experience is, and uh, and that's part of you know building a franchise. You know, I, and I think it's great they're they're leaning into that. And look, they're spending a tremendous amount of money on on all of this. You know, I don't think this is a cheap endeavor whatsoever. So it's nice to hear they're not kind of cu cutting corners elsewhere where you could maybe try and get away with it to a certain degree. So before we wrap up here, though, is there any other thing that you found kind of notable being so, you know, embedded with the team, being at practices, traveling and going to other games? Anything that's notable kind of about the G League experience? I know I'm putting you like right on the spot with that question. No, there. no, like I, there's a lot. I mean, I just, again, like having covered basketball, it's just surprising, you know, being here, how little people know about the G League. Um, so like most of what I've seen has been kind of like a surprise. Um, I, you know, I just didn't know much about what day to day is like. And, um, you know, I will say what has stood out to me is um, how hard these guys go. I mean, it's just, you know, obviously they're competing to try to make it, um, but the level, like the intensity of practices is is crazy. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog. He's, he's drinking No, it's water. all good. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. uh, but the level of intensity of practices is, you know, it, that always stands out. Um, and, you know, the, the work that they're putting in, I mean, Joe Young, uh, who's, you know, 29, has, has had a very successful career. He's he gets up at 5.45 every morning to work out and he calls it the breakfast club and that's every day. So that's 5.45 <laughs> before practice and before shoot around, before games, he does that every single day. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is that, you know, I, I think that there's a, um, there's a tendency to view the G League. I had this tendency to view the G League almost like an AAU type situation where you mm -hmm. have all these guys who are competing for limited spots. And so it's like, let me get mine, you know, let me go one-on-one, -on -one. let me do 
uh, let me show off what I can do. But because, uh, you know, the team, like typically NBA teams aren't looking for guys who are ball dominant or trying to average 30 or whatever. It's the guys who are doing the little things and, uh, you know, who, who don't turn it over, who don't make mistakes, who communicate on defense, who always play hard. And so the way that these teams play, I mean, it, it's almost the opposite of what you would expect. These teams are incredibly unselfish. Like everybody wants to make the extra pass because the extra pass is like what stands out to scouts, not the, so, so all of those like uh, conceptions of the game is like, Oh, I'm going to watch. And, and, you know, somebody's just going to go one-on-one the whole time. I, I would say like more often than not, I'm sitting there like, why isn't he shooting? Like he, he should shoot more. But they're right. passing a lot, and they're really trying to show that that those elements of their game, uh, as opposed to just always trying to get there. So, uh, those are just some of the things I could go on forever about the things. No, but that's like super interesting to think because you would think a guy might be just gunning to average thirty points per game. Maybe like, look what I can do. Call me up. But if that's not, you know, they might not be able to do that at the NBA level where you can do that in the G League. So you've got to do other things that kind of. It's like an understanding of your place, I think, right? Like if you get called up, you're not going to go out and score 30 points. You are going to be expected to pass the ball, be unselfish and try and help your team win, even if that's only in seven to, you know, to 10 minutes per game. So what can you do to kind of maximize your chances? So hearing these guys kind of bought into something like that and playing that style of ball, I think is an encouraging thing to hear. Should these guys ever get called up, not just to the Pelicans, but any team? For sure. Yeah, I think um, the way to think about it is the, the best way really to to get to the NBA is through a role. I mean, it's not yeah, it's not just dominating. It's not just going out and, and averaging 30 because NBA teams, they got many guys who can average 30. I mean, uh, so they're looking for people who do very specific things. And, and I think the main thing is who don't make mistakes, um, don't make mistakes and always play hard always play with effort. And so those things, like those, these guys are committed to that. I mean, this squadron team has a bunch of like, it's all high character guys who, who understand those things. Um, and uh, that's just been like a joy to watch for me because uh, when you see guys always going hard, you know, trying to, to make their teammates better, it, it's, it's the opposite of what I expected, you know? So, uh, so that's been cool to experience so far. No, very cool. So I'm excited to to try and watch this game on Sunday, the home opener, the first game there. I think is a really Amazing. cool thing. You'll be you, you'll be covering it as well. So Alex, thanks so much for your time today, talking some G League here. No, thank you so much, man. I have so much respect for the grind of what you do, uh, and I've been listening <laughs> to the podcast forever. So uh, thank you so much for having me on. No, I appreciate it. We'll have you on again soon to talk G League a little bit more as we get some more updates on the team. And I'm sure we'll start to see some of those guys make an appearance on on the Pelicans as the season goes on, especially if it continues the way that it's going right now. So I appreciate the time, man. For sure, man. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. Thank you all very much for listening. Again, make Locked On Pelicans your first listen every single day. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and we'll be back with you all next week.